area with 51. Everything in the butterflies. Go get your man. And I feel like butterfly gonna recap this. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. Personals is fucking real. We need that. That's, that could be the motherfucking nail in the coffin if it's the right personal. You know what I mean? So you definitely gotta dig your dirt up before these battles, cause a nigga will dig dirt up on you, though. Do not think he won't. So you know I got dirt for this nigga. It's battle rap, man. I've 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 been hit with some of them. Um, I dished out some of them. You get what I'm saying? It's time to drop a shell on them. Bang, boogie, farewell, garbage MCs, we got the... First thing rep and a damn thing to me. It is what it is and not what it should be. Life start feeling like a goddamn movie. Pussy wet and warm, cooling down a jacuzzi. On a flight, chest out, sipping on smoothie. Fight a tennis, sucking dick. So I'm eating pussy, beat it up. Now nah, next nigga fucking with a hoopty. She shot for the drive, but I still call it juicy. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers, that notification gang, etc., etc. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. Click and blame, follow me on Instagram, Vada underscore fly, tell your mama I said hi. Also, salute to my guy, Showtime SP, and everybody who subscribes to this content, whether religiously or in passing. So, the way we're going to do this right here is it's actually two parts. So, the first part will be what I speak about right now, which is just a quick synopsis of some murder mook versus Reed Dollars things. And then there's a whole nother joint that me and Showtime SP did about two raw for the streets versus smacking where did it start who did what etc 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 all right so now that we're drawing closer and closer to read dollars versus murder moot you start to see them take specific angles at each other talking about who started what where when why you know what i'm saying like who was getting supported by who first whose name was buzzing in the streets more who had shit on lock i will say this while Reed Dollars is a very respectable, commendable, legendary figure in just not only the Philly scene, but in battle rap in general, Murder Moot was like the pinnacle. Like when people started watching the DVDs and the, the whole battle rap shit really popped off, it was because of Murder Moot. You know what I'm saying? I remember NBA Live, like 2003, we'd play live all day. This is before 2K. We'd play NBA Live. We'll watch the Smack DVDs and we'll watch them just for Murder Mook at the end to see who he was battling, whether it was Party Artie or Loaded Lux um, or, you know what I'm saying, or, or the joint Sirius Jones. Like that was, he was a staple in the Smack DVD era. So while I will say, while Reed Dollars is not wrong for feeling like he is legendary and feeling like he's one of them niggas, Murder Mook is going to be at the top, like if there's a logo in battle rap or when it goes down 15, 20 years from now, it'll be to refer to as a sport that Murder Mook revolutionized, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's, be that as it may, whether you like what he does, whether you don't, whether you fuck with him, what he does nowadays or you don't, you can't take away what he's done, you know what I'm saying? And that's just from what I see. Um, I do still think this is going to be a very interesting battle. I think both have their own unique perspective on one another, and they definitely are going to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to delve too much in it, but I was asked that question, so I figured I would give my opinion. But anyway, let's get into this conversation that me and my guy Showtime SP had. Talk to him right now. I know about this shit. Oh, no. Too raw for the streets. See the dead. thing? How was I not? I you don't know about Kaboom. No. The real Kaboom. No. You don't know about Hollow Man, not Hollow the Dawn. Nah. Hollow Man. Nah. You don't remember. You don't know about Magic and Steel. What? I was you dead. don't remember. You, you remember don't, Deuce? You, you remember don't, Deuce? I remember Deuce. Oh, okay. I'm just letting you know. We can go. We you, you, don't, all you, night. you don't remember Eddie Morris. Oh, yeah, my I'm God. the hard. You know D. Jones. Okay. We're, we're going, we're going. Who, who was his boss? Okay, then. All right, nigga. You don't I, know. We I, got, I love this what shit. What we talking about here? I we promise talk about you, bro. Here. We talk about top class. We talk about touch money. We talk we about talk, yeah, yeah, We yeah. talk about headshot yeah. DVDs. We talk about monster music. What we talking about? 
We talk about your hair. We talk about NH. We talking about remember the motherfucking interview with Kaboom, where the nigga said I don't got no cell phone. <laughs> he told he said he said the labels is calling. <laughs> I don't got no cell phone. phone. So my mom just answers and says Def Jam called for you today. This was like 2004, 2003. Listen, you wasn't, you wasn't, you, you don't know about this shit. We talking man. about South Philly, we talking about Cree Forge, we talking about mm. K Dot, we talking about uh, 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 Cree uh, uh, Forge, we talking, yeah. we talking real. I'm, listen, man, don't, man. don't put the facts out there if let's they ain't go, facts. Let's go. We listen. was here before Snap. Oh, okay. Let's keep it a stack. All right, so here's the deal, right? And the reason why this, I feel like this conversation is essential is because obviously, um, Everybody's been talking. I've seen a couple interviews where they're talking about who came first and whatever the case may be. Mm. Um, too Raw for the Streets. Shout out to Star. Shout out to Too Raw for the Streets. Mm -hmm. um, they, they actually started a YouTube channel, I think, not too long ago, where they actually uploading a lot of the mm -hmm. old content. Mm -hmm. uh, where a lot of those, where they had the Philly versus uh, Jersey battle yep. with the Balboas and with all those other cats and with that um, that NH joint uh, with uh, Joey Jahab was on there. It was a lot of cats on that joint. They had a lot of old freestyles. I heard a blue flame and a minute, man. Right. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you was this? I was there. I, that's what I'm saying. But um, that history, as far as being the whole um, too raw for the streets movement, mm. I will say this. Smack DVD, cause I remember like when Smack DVD first started, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like with all of the freeze, like we used to cop them joints for the battles, you know mm. what I mean? Like even though when they first started, they would have like 50 Cent on there, Jim Jones was on there, mm. uh, the BMF one was a huge one when they had BMF on there. Yeah. A lot of different artists was on there. But then the battles started popping up at the end. Mm. Murder Mook was like the forefront of those battles, you know what I'm saying? Murder Mook had the um, Party already joined on there. He had loaded Lux on there. He had uh, he had Party already loaded Lux, and Got he battled uh, 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 no no he battled um, he had a couple. The Young Hot was on a Smack DVD. Uh, yeah. Rex battled against Uncas on a Smack DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a battle. Nova versus Nova was on a Smack DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of fucking battles on them Smack DVDs. You know what I'm saying? Like and then um, it poured over into Fight Club and Too Raw for the Streets was its own movement, you yep. know what I'm saying? Like, they had a lot of battles on their joints. For real, for real, Too Raw For The Streets was out where my mans had to get the DVD. You had to go to a certain mixtape or a record bar to go get the DVD. Right. And then he would tape it, like literally put it on a VHS tape. Right. And that's how we used to get it through, like, for real. I mean, like, but how they did, how uh, too raw for the streets format was it was a lot of the Philly cats basically Big Star was running through the city anybody they just put a beat on and that's how they just started rapping like it wasn't really necessarily battles yeah. it was just guys that was showcasing a bar so like one of the first people I seen was Cheek Raw mm -hmm. and like and I still don't even know that instrumental to this day like I don't know that physical beat I just know Cheek Raw shots for the street show niggas relate to me I'm from the street show but it was that <laughs> Um, you had uh, uh, Vodka, Sandman. Um, mm -hmm. We talking about uh, uh, we Hollow had Man. I mean, <laughs> Hollow Man. Hollow Man. Yeah, they, they, they're not Hollow that dog. Mm -hmm. PC. Hollow Man. PC. Listen, Hollow Man versus Enes. Come on, dog. Let's you had it. him. Mm -hmm. You had uh, Cicero. Yeah. Cicero was on. When I tell y'all the what y'all see when y'all look at Cicero versus Cortez. That, that ain't, ain't it. That ain't the Cicero we that talk about. This. Cicero was really in the runnings yeah. with battling Cassidy. Uh -huh. Like there was. A Cicero versus Cassidy mixtape out, and Cicero had a couple shots on Cassidy. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Cassidy had one. So his... I ain't gonna rumble you. Mm -hmm. I remember them yeah. joints. You know what I'm saying? Like Cass was actually one of the bigger. Like there's, you saw literally two off for the streets was like you saw Cassidy when he was the young boy. He had his hat to the back. He was chilly. He had the low cut waves. Then you seen him getting money. He was with full surface, and it was kind of following him. Mm -hmm. So the way that Two Raw for the Streets was, it was just guys rapping and interviewing whoever's like the Philly greats. When it came to Smack, their their thing was at the end of the DVD because they was interviewing all of the industry guys. But at mm -hmm. the end, they were showing more of the street dudes. Yeah. So that was the difference between the two. Now, as somebody who's from Philly, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I'm be honest with you, a lot of cats that's from New York. Mm -hmm. Or that's from different cities besides Philly, mm -hmm. probably are not as familiar with Too Raw for the Streets. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of cats that oh, yeah, they're just not familiar with it, you know what I mean? 
But I will say I'm familiar with it. Mm. I remember it. Um, I remember the Reed Dollars, the, the freestyle, you know, the, the bricks behind the pots and the pans, mm -hmm. the 40 to the neck. You mm -hmm. must have said that on like three or four different DVDs. We, we, we was definitely <laughs> recycling. And so the boys all stinking, and, and roll around 24s <laughs> on the Lincoln. You know what I'm but, uh, like, but you had to look at it too, whereas Philly was definitely more crabs in a barrel type situation. So it was more like if you doing something and it's working for you, I'm gonna try to do the same thing and make it work for me. Right. That's where you saw the division. So it was too raw for the streets was first, but you gotta remember there was headshot DVDs, okay. and, head, and that was that was Young Bob. Young Bob was headshot, and that's where Meek Mill come into play. Meek Mill wasn't on too raw for the streets like that. Mm. He was on headshots. They had a couple other ones. It was like it was banana clips. It was gorilla clips. It was like a bunch of different DVDs that was trying to do the same format, but. The definitive name was Too Raw for the Streets. But in New York, it was only Smack. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, but no, nah, they had uh we had there was other DVDs, there was a come up DVD, uh there was uh there was a couple other joints too, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But Smack was obviously that was the, the biggest at the, thing. At the biggest thing. But mm -hmm. what I will say is this. Um preservation means everything mm -hmm. and Too Raw for the Streets wasn't preserved well. No. Is what I'm saying. No. Like I recently got followed by a Twitter. I believe it's a Too Raw for the Streets Twitter. I think they just started a Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's 2021. You see what I'm saying? The YouTube channel, they, they literally started uploading stuff on YouTube like six, six months, months ago. ago. <laughs> We've got a 13, 20, 50, uh, this is like a, a 10 year gap. Yes. You see what I'm saying? The preservation mm -hmm. ruins the presentation. Ooh. But the preservation, it, pre it wasn't preserved well. You Correct. know what I'm saying? Like, uh, there's people who can like, grab different stories about NHs or about Kabooms mm -hmm. or about the D Jones about all of these guys, you know what I'm saying? But there it wasn't like I see the videos getting uploaded, they got a couple thousand but it's a couple thousand views, but some of the Smack D V D old joints got millions of views. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Rex vs Uncasa, millions of views. Mm -hmm. It was it became a cultural thing, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think for like I said, from the preservation standpoint, the it wasn't preserved well, so now when it's re re you know, re, 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 like represented, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it's presented, reproduced or, reproduced yeah. or represented. Mm -hmm. It's cool and it, it brings back certain memories, but yeah. it's like this stuff should have been in the algorithm yes. for years yes. and years and years and years. So when you see a murder Mook and, and Reed Dollars talking their shit to each other, it's kind of like Mook has an upper hand because he's like, yo, what we did made this. Mm -hmm. What you did. Yes, you was the first rapper that had millions of views, you know what I'm saying? The viral, the 40 to the neck and all of that stuff. Mm. But it didn't produce, because the thing, and I'm gonna be honest with you, Reed left for a while, you see what I'm saying? Like, Reed was not in Battle Rap, Battle Rap, from when it first got buzzing in 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, he might have came back, it was 16 he came back when he battled against Chess, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He battled before that against John John, but he wasn't, he missed a significant period in battle rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. when people started getting names, like the Summer Madness 1, Summer Madness 2, when Hollow came up, when Charlie Clips came up, mm -hmm. when John John, well John John took a little bit longer, but when Loaded Lux and when Murder Mook, when all these guys was building significant names and mm -hmm. huge platforms, Reed Dollars was like, off, doing whatever he was doing. But we did have one, we had one. Who we had? Ines. Yeah, but the thing is, Ines I was like, was the only so okay. I, so, and I can tell you that break. So when Reed basically stopped, mm -hmm. Ness was already in the like making the band already was about to disband. Mm -hmm. It was already about to get to the point. I think once Ness was on grind time mm -hmm. and he battled Iron Solomon, that was when Ines was back in the swing of battling. And from then on, he was the only one from Philly. That was holding the flag for Philly. Like New York had a bunch of niggas, but Enes was the only one during that time. Cause I call it the age of Meek. Cause mm -hmm. once Meek got on, once mm -hmm. Meek Mill got on, all of the guys that were trying to battle and that were mainly battling, music. they was trying to do music. Mm -hmm. So then it was just a whole flood of everybody sounding, and it's just a crab in a barrel. Everybody was trying to sound the same, mm -hmm. but Ness was the only one that was willing to battle niggas, and he was from Philly. And, and I'm and I'm almost certain that's almost. Very, very true. Because well, everybody had fell off. Well, the thing about Ness, and I got a lot of respect for Ness, you know what I'm saying? Ness has not and is not a top tier battle rapper. He was on some of Madness, too. I'm just, but. <laughs> I know. I get it. But that was the worst. Boo, 
remember that shit. <laughs> right. And I fuck with Ines, but Ines has never been a top tier battle rapper. No. You know what I'm saying? You're absolutely right. And I feel like, now nah, I'm going to recap this, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, when you're dealing with the perennial MCs who are like at the top of this game, um, New York has so many, you know. When I look at, I'm going to just say PA in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just not just going to do Philly because I know there's some people who's very particular. Yo, this person's from this part. This mm -hmm. person's from Norristown. This yes. person's from Chester. That nigga's not from here. He's from Lancaster. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I know people, niggas in Philly are very protective of where they're from. So I'll just say PA. <laughs> um, right now, top tier, Reed, mm -hmm. Bill Collector. Is Bill Collector top tier MC? Yeah. I would I would consider Bill top tier. I would consider Bill Bill Collector top tier. If he, if anything, he's he's a mid top tier. Super mid tier. He's a mid top tier. Super tier. duper duper scoped mid tier. He right there though. His uh, bag might not be there, but depending on the competition, his bag go. Raw mid tier. Raw to his mid tier. Yep. Um, easy to block captain will be top tier. He's 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 mid tier right now. He's but he will be. Yeah. Like he's trending oh, upwards yeah. depending mm -hmm. on what he does versus. I think. What he does versus Chess and what he does in the next couple battles, look, we, the jury's still out on that. We'll, 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 we'll turn to this. We'll, we'll have this. We'll spend the block on this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think but he has what it takes mm -hmm. to become a top tier himself. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. That's the biggest thing. If there's anybody a, who's the newer name in Philly, yes, it's easy. Yeah, it's got to be easy. Easy, 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 easy. Um, Yeah, because he made Summer Madness, um, mm -hmm. even though originally he, him and Chess wasn't on there, but, mm -hmm. you know, it was what it was. Yeah. But, um... Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the uh, to the manuscript. Needless to say, it was the history between Mook and Reed. The, it's it's about who's telling the story, and both of them can tell the story, but Mook's story is more documented, more mm -hmm. well documented. It's it's way more things that you can prove. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean that what Reed is saying is false, because that's not the case. Because there are there are a few people that will definitely say, "Yo, yeah, Reed is right. It was it, we was doing it since this." And we was getting millions of views. Also, things about New York was the opportunities. Mm -hmm. There was way more opportunities in New York than Philly did. Because mm -hmm. in order for uh, Cats and Philly to get on, they had, had to, to go, go to New York. They had to go to Rome. Cats didn't get on if it wasn't for Swiss. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't no... Ness wouldn't have got on if it wasn't for Puff. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. So, the history is, is basically... The history is, yes, New York had the bigger name and the bigger uh, uh come up and you could tell that everything has been the outlet for new york but new york has always been like that mm -hmm. in order for you to get on no matter what shit anybody that want to battle in philly right now yes you can run battle academy you can definitely kill on battle academy but we all know battle academy is just nothing but the gateway mm -hmm. to where you gotta go <clears throat> right and like i said i really feel like that the preservation yeah, I will, I'm gonna re go, mm -hmm. touch that again. Mm -hmm. um, it took away from some of the the, the acclaim. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like because Absolutely. what came? Well, all right, let's go. When you remove after that, 2005, six, when the DVD era died, mm -hmm. and the DVD era kind of it died because the bootleg. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like when you yeah. had the original product when it first came out. They were pushing the original product. Everybody was copying DVDs for the for the price that they were. Mm -hmm. But then once they started getting bootleg heavy, people instead of buying, <clears throat> let me get five hundred copies, they'll just go buy one. Wasn't it like a big old? It was a big. It was a big uh uh like not a bus, but wasn't because DJ Drama was in that. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing where it was the whole. There was no um uh, help me out. There was no receipts. There was no accountability after a while. Thank yeah. you. There was no receipts for all of it. Like if I'm burning a hundred, you know, DVDs, I'm expecting to make profit over that, and I can't copy that you can't because copy that. usually the way that the record bars was, and I and we now we going into a whole different conversation. But if you wanted to get on, you had to have a mixtape. But mm -hmm. in order for your mixtape to get sold, you had to basically <laughs> go under the table and go to certain record bars and record places that were selling regular actual product, mm -hmm. and they also sold CDs and DVDs. You know right. what I'm saying? But they, of course, they wasn't keeping track of those type of sales because mm -hmm. if I was the promoter or if I was the manager of said battle rapper or a said rapper and I take a bunch of mixtapes mm -hmm. and bring it here, I'm expecting some type of cut mm -hmm. from that. And mm -hmm. if I ain't got no copy or receipt to say that I got... And, and, it never happened. You see what I'm saying? And, and I'm just telling you because I was there. <laughs> right. And 
the that the once the the mixtapes and DVDs started getting once bootleg, they, they down, yep. it killed the whole wave, you yep. know. And then after the DVD wave, the MP3 wave came. When yep. the MP3 cave wave came, a lot of the two raws and the smacks were starting to be able to be Digital. downloaded yep. on LimeWire. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then when YouTube came around yep. 2005, 2006, like once YouTube took off in mm -hmm. 2006, it was over. Was you know it. what I'm saying? Like everything started getting uploaded on YouTube. There was no need to. Uh, Cop DVDs no more. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, YouTube used to just be fights and battles. And and one mixtape. And and one mixtape. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was it. Yep. <laughs> fights, battles, mixtape. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And and, and uh, basketball shit. You know what I mean? That's all it was. Um, and one like freaking and one mixtape in the park. Mm -hmm. The professor, mm -hmm. hot sauce, and mm -hmm. fucking. And that was the only Escalade way you could see stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. But I do respect overall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna say it like this. While Too Raw for the Streets was first, mm -hmm. you know, it's documented. They had shit out in 2001 with fucking interviews and shit like that, mm -hmm. Petey Crack and all the niggas. Yep. While it was first, it wasn't the most impactful. Correct. It did not create the, like, because if you think about everybody that was on Too Raw for the Streets, the only person that probably really was probably Reed and probably Ness. Cassidy. Cass, and I don't really, I mean, I Cass, yeah. Cass but, was the biggest star. That's what I said. Cass was. But the, Cass kind of was already on his way up before the DVDs came. The shit really hit. You know what I'm saying? Like Cass was that nigga. He like I'm gonna just say like I don't feel. I personally don't feel like I Too Raw for the Streets created Cassidy's buzz. You know what I'm saying? No, but it definitely pushed Cass. Like what it happened? Because okay. because it was more like. We knew, we heard all of the all, all of the, the best of Cassidy's and and and, and hit all the those, radio shits like all the radio all of the come up shows you had to get all of those on a mixtape. But Big Star was going with Cassidy to some of those places, so that's where you actually saw the visual. I'm not I'm not gonna say that he. I'm pretty sure that Big Star or one of them guys from Philly was there when they when they taped uh, Cassidy vs Freeway. Mm. I'm almost certain. That it was one of them that was there because if, if anything, because that's not on a Smack DVD, you get what I'm saying? But once that became digitally that grainy footage, <laughs> yeah, oh man, it was dirty. Oh, it was dirty. I like the beef. <laughs> Still like night, but put you right, right to sleep. sleep. Put your mouth on the curb, make you bite the street. Have both of y'all missing like pipe but tea. Uh, you flip to my bad, my bad, my yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, cast yeah. I hit. <laughs> um, it's, that's that's a, that's a different story. It's 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 just it is a whoever tells the story. Is gonna be the one like they are gonna glorify you know the biggest part of it. Yes, we created the ripple, but of course Smack created the, the splash. Well, you know they say a lie that isn't refuted becomes the truth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh, there was no elder real spokesperson for the two raw for the streets. No DVD or the person that's gonna. And the thing is, Murder Mook is not the flag carrier for the Smack DVD. He's speaking more for for himself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I was the one that did this. I was the one. But he just happens to shout out the Smack DVD in the process. But yeah. like I said, the distributing of Smack DVD was better. The outreach was better. Mm -hmm. The and the people that it created. And then when you look at as far as the URL gets created, you know what I'm saying? That's another brand off of the Smack DVDs. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like. Um, and then, you know, and the, and the format was better, you know, you'd have interviews with like bigger artists that kind of trickled down and then you knew the battle was coming at the end, you know what I'm saying? And those DVDs, you pop, you pop it in and you could just like skip all the way to the end mm -hmm. if you wanted to just see the battle. Because I remember seeing Smack DVDs on tape, you know what I'm saying? Like I've seen them Jones on tape. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I remember seeing my two, I remember seeing two Raw Streets. I remember, well, Headshot was the ones that was putting battles at the end. Yeah. So like two raw for the streets when they did their battles, it was always Philly versus somebody. Yeah, Philly versus Jersey. But yeah. my thing was, I was always asking the question, well, how did these niggas get val you know validated to be you know the representative <laughs> for Philly? Right. But don't get it twisted, like critical Eddie Morris. We talking about uh, Reed. We talking Cicero. That whole Philly versus Harrisburg. That that whole event itself was just a crazy battle because literally it was also too. Who who vouched for these Philly niggas? Same thing for goes for the Harrisburg niggas and the New York niggas. Like when they did Philly versus New York, I don't. I think the only big name that was there was yeah, like Fox Five. Like mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? But another Ooh, person, was there. Yeah, another Ooh, person that uh that that came that came up a lot was uh R J Payne. 
you know what I'm saying? And didn't really Rayman. speak much. Yeah, Rain Man, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But he really transitioned over from the battling to He just, got to this now. That's what I'm saying. RJ Payne got here now. I remember this we me and Lord was just having this conversation. We remember seeing Rain Man on the L, okay? Mm -hmm. With the two tone do rag. Yeah. Oh, with <laughs> so, the bald head and the white head. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that nigga. Yes. Tall, skinny, bald. Yes. That was Raymond. But he just got to this stage. Same thing about D. Jones. Mm -hmm. D. Jones goes by a different name now, too. Mm. If I'm not mistaken, because he's he was rapping with uh he was rapping with Dave East. Mm, yeah, 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 y'all yeah, in the comments because I know y'all know who I'm talking. I'm pretty sure because I uh, saw his name uh, and I was like, "That's D Jones." We talk right, about right, D right, Jones right. ball with the, yeah, that's D Jones. We is it? He goes by something else though. Just I, keep going. I'm, I'm trying fine. to remember. I'm fine. But you, but the thing that two roll for the streets really, really displayed was heavy lyricism. It, mm -hmm. it showed you that anybody you ran up on in Philly. Mm -hmm. They probably ready. They probably got a bar. They probably got some bars ready. Right. Whereas where Rex was just going from hood to hood. Mook was going from hood to hood. You mm -hmm. know, all of them was going from hood to hood. But the guy that was following them, Smack, or the guy that had the camera, he that's their guy. Right. Star was just going to different parts of Philly. Like, all right, we about to go up north. We about to see what's going on up there. Let's see what them niggas sound like. We about to go down south Philly, see what they sound like. Right. Literally, it was just like we going whoever. And whenever you saw, whenever you saw Big Star, Usually you try to get your squad together, you try to get your crew together, you make sure you got your shit together, because just in case you're like, yo, you got the camera, what's up? Right. Um, and, and that's really how it was, because there was a bunch of talent. There was so much talent in Philly. Mm -hmm. Like, the, oh my God, Vodka was, Vodka on any beat was going off. He still like, calls himself D. Jones. Um, He's got songs with Jada Kiss, with Dave East. Okay, so he still calls himself like, D. Yeah, he's got a mixtape. I could have sworn he would buy He dropped a mixtape called La Adelphia in, mm -hmm. in uh, 2021, he's got Freeway PD Crack on mm -hmm. it, a lot of other features on it. So he's doing his thing with the rap shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, like he crossed Mills, the Mills, Quilly man. Mills. Like Quilly um, Mills, and that's another cat who was talented when it came to the music. City Romanecki was talented when it came to music. He wasn't battling, but City Romanecki, he went to uh, he went to Atlanta. That's where he making. We're getting that shine now because the talent was there. Mm -hmm. It's just during that time. Everybody was in the streets, man. Yeah, they got another. They got a lot of nice cats in Philly now. You know what I'm saying? They got dude Leaf Ward. He's fire. Uh, and they got a couple other dudes that I've been hearing recently. That's the major figures. Y'all always talk about Gilly, but let's not forget about Spado. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Once so, he got out, we was hey. We right. Was I actually battled him in a Foot Locker. Did you? Where's the footage, man? It's, uh, it, listen, only person that knows is my my manager. You got cooked. Cook. It was one round. Oh, you got cooked. And I gave him the light shit. Second time around though, yeah, he, he he was walking out by that time because I left because he was definitely about to walk out. Yeah. Oh yeah, he got cooked. I mean, we need the footage, man. Tell you, man, we, let's get the footage, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that it's important that it's imperative that now that that footage and now that that era is being spoken about, that you know we speak about these kind of yeah. things, and um, you know it is what it is. But you know what it is. Pluto. Shit, first thing rep and a damn thing to me. It is what it is and not what it should be. Life start feeling like a goddamn movie. Pussy wet and warm, cooling down the jacuzzi. On a flight, chest out, sipping on smoothie. Fight the tennis, sucking dick. So I'm eating pussy, beat it up. Now, next nice nigga fucking with a hoopy. She shot for the drive, but I still call it juicy. Okay. He's actually a nice guy. I ain't got nothing to say. Nothing bad to say about the guy. I kind of like the guy. I'm a fan. He's a little bit of a nigga. Like, he's a little bit of a nigga. I'd rather do it with somebody that I respect and I know it's nice to give MC Wall a good show. And this is a different kind of battle. We've got, you know, the first two rounds of beat, the third round like a fella. The third round, me and K gonna get crazy, we're gonna talk. First round, we're gonna show y'all that we could really do this to some music. You understand me? But we're gonna do this with a little twist, you know what I mean? So shout out to my nigga Big K. I gotta put my foot in his ass. That's my nigga. Right? 